at the end of the 16th century, the country of Brazil was not settled by Spain. Pedro Alvarez Cabral landed there with a fleet of 13 ships, and he claimed it in the name of Portugal. Today, more than half the population is of Portuguese descent. One of their native sons, in 2017, left his house in shorts and a t-shirt, and vanished. The disappearance of Bruno Borges, on the cusp of a brilliant career, has captivated Brazilian media for months. But even in his absence, Bruno Borges may be able to save the world. Bruno's mother is a psychologist, his father a businessman. He grew up reading books, over 1,000 of them. As a student at Unanorte University, he studied psychology, but his passion was for the esoteric. Demonology and alchemy, the Bible and the occult. He solicited donations in 2013 from his extended family for what he called Project Enzo. One of his cousins contributed $20,000. For the next four years, Bruno Borges worked on Project Enzo by writing 14 books. He believed his books would change mankind for the better. His parents had returned from a 20-day vacation. Bruno had lunch with his parents, but his father, on March 27th, discovered that Bruno was missing. Opening the door to his son's room, he saw that all the furniture was gone. In its place, in the center of the room, was a life-size statue of the philosopher Giordano Bruno. It was a copy of a statue in Rome, a reproduction created by a local sculptor, which his son had secretly commissioned for thousands of dollars. Giordano Bruno, an Italian Dominican monk, died in the 16th century the same year that Brazil was discovered by Portugal. Bruno Borges had more in common with him than the name Bruno. Giordano's esoteric teaching was an inspiration to Borges, and the two men are so familiar in appearance that Borges may well be the reincarnation of the holy friar Giordano. In addition to the statue, the floor, walls, and ceiling were covered with passages written in code and symbols of the occult. His 14 books were also written in code, and they were on display with covers marked in large red Roman numerals. Fortunately, Borges also left behind instructions on how to decode his work. He used more than one cipher, but most of them were based on simple substitution. Investigation by Brazilian authorities exposed Bruno's movements in the three weeks before his disappearance. As soon as his parents left on vacation, he hired two of his friends to help him transform his bedroom into a shrine. They disposed of his furniture, except for his bed and one bookshelf, which he asked one friend to store for him. They built new bookshelves and alcoves in the walls. Then they used white paint 
to cover every inch of the interior. Next, Bruno himself adorned the interior with textual and pictographic messages painted in black. Finally, the three young men muscled the full-size statue into the room. It weighs almost 300 pounds. Bruno expected the publication of his notebooks to raise enough money to build a hospital. After the disappearance, his family made a deal with Infinity Marketing to bring his work to print, beginning with Volume 1, The Theory of Absorption of Knowledge. But they are not doing it for the money. They publish in hopes that Bruno is still alive, and that it will encourage him to rejoin them. Bruno left behind a painting of himself, posing next to an alien, commonly known as a gray. In it, they are both dressed in monk's habits. A similar image of a gray was also found exactly 20 years before his disappearance, overlooking the bodies of dead cultists at Heaven's Gate in California. One can only pray that Bruno Borges did not become a doomsday cult of one. When I saw the guys get around in, in uh, yellow t-shirts in Central Market, I thought, I bet that's what they're doing. And had Oz Harvest t-shirts on. Volunteering Australia wants the country to be the happiest place on earth during National Volunteer Week, with this year's theme, Give Happy, Live Happy. Research shows that giving happiness to others makes volunteers happier in return. It's fantastic to be part of something that really makes a difference to our community and getting to spend time with other people that really care about making that difference to other people too. 